Well, hey everyone, my name is Nathan Jones, and if you're new here, welcome. I like to talk about all things movies, specifically Blu-rays, and today we're going to be talking about a Blu-ray haul for the early part of May. Normally I do this towards the end of the month, but there's a lot of releases and titles that I had pre-ordered, and they finally came in, and a lot of them I'm very excited about. Actually, about a, a good number of them I have actually seen before, so I can give you some of my thoughts on that. And uh, just very excited to share the uh, showcase and share what I've picked up. Um, but before we jump into that, I would love to know what you've been watching, what you've been collecting for the month of May. Let me know in the comment section down below. All right, so with that being said, let's jump into the titles that I picked up. Now, the first one that I picked up is one from 1963. It is a Paramount film and is starring William Holden and Audrey Hepburn. This is Paris When It Sizzles, and this actually just came out a few weeks ago uh, on Blu-ray, and it's rather cheap too, so I, I definitely picked this one up. But it's a rom-com from the early 60s, and uh, definitely excited about it because I guess it's uh, about a script that's un getting unfinished uh, and the deadline's fast approaching, so it sounds like a really fun plot. And I, I'm definitely wanting to watch more Audrey Hepburn films, and I've really enjoyed William Holden's work so far. And yeah, so this film definitely was up my radar when I was looking over it. And yeah, it looks like a little fun time. So Paris, when it sizzles, let me know if you can pick this one up. All right, next we're going to talk about a film from 2021. This is actually from A24. This one, for some reason, escaped my radar. I had no idea about it. But it is The Humans right here. And this is based on a Tony Award winning play. Uh, and it's starring Richard Jenkins. It is starring Jane uh, Hoodyshell, Amy Schumer, Beanie Feldstein, Stephen Yoon and June Squibb, and I love a lot of those people, and uh, there's a few people I, I recognize, but maybe would have to picture, right? But The Humans is really just about a conversation of er Eric Blake, I, I would assume is played uh, by Richard Jenkins, has gathered his three generations of his family uh, to celebrate Thanksgiving at his daughter's apartment in Lower Manhattan. Now, as darkness falls outside and eerie things go bump at night, the group's deepest fears are laid bare. Uh, it's funny, and a good debut uh, from Stephen Karam and adapted from his play. Uh, I guess it explores hidden dread of a family and uh, the love that they have together. So I, I, based on that back alone, I was definitely curious about this film. And I do love a good conversation uh, that really enthralls you. And so The Humans definitely look, you know, checks all those marks for me. But I would love to know if any of you have seen this film. I would love to know in the comment section down below. All right, next we're going to talk about a film that all of you have probably seen but is one that was missing in my collection because when I upgraded all of my Star Wars 4Ks, uh, this one was, for some reason, not on sale. So eventually it was on sale, and I picked it up on Amazon. It's still in a shrink wrap, uh, but it is Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones, which is arguably one of the worst Star Wars films, but I, I definitely wanted to have the collection, of course, in 4K, and I wanted to pick this one up because, like I said, I saw a price drop, and I just remember a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, when I was younger watching this, of course, and uh, I really enjoyed it when I was a kid, uh, and definitely subsequently since. I've, I've enjoyed it a little bit less, but uh, obviously the, the whole entire vision of Star Wars is something that I enjoy. So yeah, I wanted to pick up Attack of the Clones, and yeah, if, uh, if the, the price is right, I suppose I'll pick it up. So yeah, Attack of the Clones. Have you seen it? I bet you have. All right, next is a film from Criterion. This is actually going to start all the boutique labels. I have like a lot of one-ofs, which is funny. Um, but this is actually a recent release from Criterion. This is spy number 1,122. It is from 1986. It is Round Midnight. And this is starring Dexter Gordon uh, and a film by Bertrand, Bertrand uh, Tavernier. I probably butchered that. But it is about a, a love letter to the jazz club of the 1950s Paris. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, it's from uh, 1986. And uh, it's got a Herbie Hancock score, so I'm very excited about that. I do love my, my jazz scores, and uh, it looks like a jazz film dedicated to it. And this has a new 4K digital restoration with a 2.0 surround DTS HD master audio soundtrack with alternative 5.1 surround soundtrack uh, and DTS HD master audio. It also has uh, some new interviews uh, with some film critics and people who were involved with this, the producer, uh, and also a 1986 behind-the-scenes documentary on the film, a 2014 panel discussion with the director and some critics and people involved. And yeah, it also has a performance from 1969 of Fried Bananas by Dexter Gordon. And I would love to see more of those things come from Criterion. That, that would be a really cool supplement to add to at least music films, of course. But yeah, Round Midnight, this one definitely was very alluring to me based on the cover and also just the, the jazz involved. And so I wanted to pick this one up. Next is an upgrade to 4K, and I was eyeing this for some time now, but I was waiting for other people to talk about it. This is from Kino Lorber, and it is Touch of Evil. This is one of the late noirs from 1958. It's a legendary one. It's one of the best. 
uh, starring Orson Welles, of course, Charlton Heston, and Janet Leigh. Wow, this movie is insanely amazing. And I actually used to have the Blu-ray on the other side of the shelf, just the standard Blu-ray, and I was just blown away. I remember a few years ago when I finally watched it, and seeing this on 4K, and also with three versions right here, uh, it has the re reconstructed version, which is a re-edited in 1998, definitive cut uh, in Orson Welles' original kind of vision of the film, the theatrical version, which is the one that the audience saw in 58, and the preview version, which is created prior to the theatrical version, which was rediscovered in 1976 by Universal, kind of incorporating some of Orson Welles' uh, vision of the film. And it has a, a lot of really great special features, a retrospective documentary on it, um, behind the scenes reconstruction of all the films, all three of them, and it has five commentaries on it, which is, wow. Uh, I'm just really excited to see the 4K restoration of these films. And it's really gonna be really fun to rediscover this film a little bit and watch it with new eyes, with fresher eyes. And yeah, Touch of Evil, how to pick this one up, how to upgrade. And uh, yeah, let me know if you've seen this new 4K down in the comment section down below. All right, next we're gonna move to a film from Indicator and this is spine number 188. This is from 1992, good year. And this is directed by Paul Schrader, starring Willem, Daf Willem Dafoe and Susan Sarandon. And this is Light Sleeper. And I am excited about this film. I was definitely uh, loving the cover, of course, with Willem Dafoe on it. Uh, but it's about a drug dealer who is him and his supplier who is Susan Sarandon's character and her trying to get out of the business, so it really follows him and trying to get her back. And yeah, this this uh, plot intrigued me, but also so did the people involved, of course, the, the actors and then also the director. And I've been wanting to watch more Paul Schrader films. Uh, a lot of them I've just kind of missed, and uh, I love Indicator and all the things that they do. And of course, they always have a lot of special features here. Uh, so very, very excited about that. And also redoing over, you know, the booklet and uh, the reversible cover too. I love the all blue, but there's a blue and yellow on the other side as well. Um, but I switched it over to all blue because I love that. So Light Sleeper, let me know if you've seen this one down in the comment section down below. All right, next is one that I really wanted to watch for the longest time. One is because it's directed by Jean Renoir, which I really love that director and need to watch more of his films. Rules of the Game is one of my favorites. Uh, but this is actually number one in the Criterion Collection, uh, but it's only available on DVD. But I wanted the Blu-ray really bad, so I actually picked up Studio Canal's version of it. So is La Grande Illusion. So The Grand Illusion. Uh, wow. Uh, it's a war film. and It's from 1937. Uh, and I'm just really excited about this. I, I, like I said, I've been wanting to watch this for the longest time. It's been on my radar for over five or six years. And this is certainly one that has been escaped my mind for the longest time. But this is a Region B release, uh, like I was saying with the Studio Canal release. So I, I, I kind of shipped it over here. And yeah, I'm very excited to check this one out and uh, look more at uh, you know Renoir's filmography, but also watch uh, a really great war film. And so, uh, have you seen Grand Illusion? I'm sure I'm like one of the only people who hasn't seen this film. All right, next we're going to talk about a film from Eureka, Masters of Cinema, and this is a the last film starring Harry Dean Stanton, uh, and it's called Lucky right here, and is actually the de directorial debut of John uh, Carroll Lynch, and is starring David Lynch. Uh, it's also Ron Livingston, uh, Ed Beagley Jr., and Tom Skerritt. And very excited about this film. One is because it's the celebration of Harry Dean Stanton, of course, which we all love from Paris, Texas. And I, I would just love to watch more of him uh, and his interactions. And this, this release is uh, very exciting for that, for that alone. And uh, it really is about him as a, 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 a cantankerous old man, a, seven, a 70, a 90, year old, self-reliant, old atheist, and uh, and he's in Arizona and kind of just doing his own thing. So very excited about that, but this also has a really great special feature uh, list right here with uh, documentary and also has director interviews uh, with cast and crew as well and the writers and producers. And it also has a really cool film essay book right here, uh, right there with Lucky. And um, it has a lot of really cool um, photos, of course, photography, cast and crew, of course, and film essays um, from writers and people involved. So it looks like a really uh, in-depth review and it has an interview with him uh, as well, uh, I guess towards the end of his life because he passed away uh, right as this film was about to come out in 2017. So I've, I've been eyeing that since that time, but I, I certainly was able to finally pick up Lucky. So let me know if you've seen this one. All right, next we're gonna talk about these two 
last releases, which are big ones. And I'm really late to the party on this one. I was just waiting for this to go down in price and I was finally able to get it. I think it was around $58, which is a lot better than its MSRB and everything else. But I finally picked up the Godfather trilogy on 4K, uh, which I've heard just amazing things about from everybody, right? Uh, this is the 50th anniversary right here. Uh, and I, I don't want to speak too much on it because I know a lot of people have already talked about this film and showcased this movie. I have it still wrapped here. Um, but I actually still have not seen um, Coda, <laughs> The Death of Michael Corleone, which is the third film, which is like the, the re-edited version. I, I had it on Blu-ray uh, and now I'm getting rid of it since I have this version now because it has that version on this disc. Uh, but I love the first two Godfathers so much, like most people. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is definitely one of those films that well, trilogy of films that is, is, is legendary, right? It's some of the best films of all time. And I wouldn't be missed on not picking this up on 4K because, I, like I said, I've heard so many wonderful things about it uh, on the restoration uh, and uh, very, very excited that they were able to put this out on 4K uh, and really just think about it with uh, Dolby Vision and HDR10. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that's enough to say about these films. Enough said. Uh, these are phenomenal and uh, very blessed to have it now. And last but certainly not least is the film that I've been wanting for some quite some time now. And I actually imported it over here. Uh, I picked it up actually on Diabolique DVD. Uh, thank you for putting that out. And I picked up The Wicker Man. This is Imprint Films uh, version of the film. But this box set right here is just stunning right here. I love the artwork and the presentation on this. So... In this box set, and I'm sure I'm late to the party on this one, but this uh, this has three discs, of course, right here. It has the final cut right here on the front. It also has the theatrical cut and the director's cut kind of combined here. And it has a special features disc, which just has a lot of special features. So I'm very impressed with Imprint and what they've been doing. I've only been able to pick up a few things from them. Uh, but because of how expensive they are, but luckily they have so many good, great partners. And, uh, this is something that I, I'm just really excited about, uh, diving into this release because I have been super into some folk horror, as you can see up here above, uh, earlier this year, I've been watching all the Hans BR's box set and just diving into these things more and more. And the Wicker Man is one of those legendary films that I've seen multiple times and just absolutely love. So I wanted to pick this one up. It was rather expensive but certainly worth a shot because it's one of the best films uh, in full core. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just, I am super excited about this release. Um, and uh, on each of these discs, there's actually special features, which is just nuts. Um, but yeah, um, wow. Uh, this, this film and this release, I've just been blown away um, by imprint and uh, the releases that have been coming out. And now I need to save some money. Uh, and that's kind of what this next preview is until we're ending this entire Blu-ray haul. But wow, what a phenomenal thing here. Um, I, I love The Wicker Man uh, and I, I've been enjoying Imprint's films. And uh, yeah, if you ever get a chance to pick this release up, um, it's rather expensive, I will, I will admit. Um, so if you got to really love it before you buy it. But yeah, that's what I've been picking up. Uh, some some pre-orders, some releases uh, near the end of April, early May. But that's what I picked up for the for the month so far, and I'm super excited to slow down a little bit and start watching a lot more films. I'm still in the midst of my ABC movie challenge, which is a lot of fun. I'm actually in the second part of the alphabet. I just finished Q, so I'm about to be on R, so we're nearing the end of that. But anyway, uh, this has been a longer video than I wanted it to be, so thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below, like, share, hit the notification bell, subscribe, and I will see you next time. I'm not jonesing around.